Ready? Welcome to the Peoria Art Guild's newest exhibition. Our exhibition features Liu Yang from China, actually, and her exhibition, Other Planets, are abstracted photograms um, that she produced while in China, in Beijing, and had them sent over here. We're so excited to have you here. It's just so exciting and also so colorful. It's just incredible. We're gonna start here with some of the first ones, and these are your cell images, which are your smaller pieces. We'll get into the bigger ones in a minute. But um, can you explain your process on how you get this image onto the paper? Mm. Uh, my work is photogram. Photogram is uh, that I use a photographic paper, object and light in the dark room to create an image. So uh, in this uh, photo, um, I Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> um, so I use a, a photo paper, I put it on the table, and uh, I put the object. This object uh, was created by a painting. So I paint on a plastic glass. Uh, I put some colors and put some object on it. Uh, so then I use light to exposure. And uh, um, the color uh, was from the object and the light bulb. Mm -hmm. And so all of your pieces are technically done without a camera. No, and no camera. And no camera. No so camera. Um, technically your studio is your camera, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so it's a very large camera. Mm -hmm. um, and again, all of these things, why don't you try to explain to us, we call it another planet, and these are look like galaxies or some, some form of mass that's out in outer space or something like that. But how did you arrive at this series? Mm, uh, it came from uh, uh, one of my former projects called the Dream Inception. So one day I realized that I never had a dream about uh, an outer space. So I spent uh, three months to um, get the inf information incepted in my mind mm -hmm. to create a dream. <laughs> and uh, fortun uh, fortunately, I had uh, two dreams at the end. So after that, I realized uh, this is my topic. I love imagination mm -hmm. and I love science fiction. I love the universe. So I start to create this theory called Another Planet. And are these images that you saw while, while you were dreaming? Because some artists, mm -hmm. especially painters, I think, a lot of times they will literally see a painting in their head and they will execute it exactly as they've seen it. I know Agnes Martin was one of those kinds of artists. Um, so these are, this is all an image that you had seen in your dream at one point in time, right? Mm -hmm. Or something similar to this that you can then execute. And I think what's really ama amazing is this same shape is obviously the same shape that you used with the very first yes. one, but you've changed the color. Yes. And that I think gives it, this one is much darker and redder. The other one is orange, so it's a little bit lighter. And um, now I won't, don't wanna say it's more like fire because this is definitely like fire, but there's just a different kind of tone set when you do that. We're Did you change, can I ask a question? Did you change the color of the light? So what color light did you use for this particular piece? For this particular uh, piece, I used the uh, blue light. Okay, so and this use, piece? Did oh. you use films that you put over the light to change the color? Uh, I used laser. Laser, okay. Mm -hmm. And this piece down here, this the same, what color light did you use on uh, it? I use a green light. Okay. And so green so different on the lights. spectrum of the light spectrum mm -hmm. is going to be different than a painter's green that and they the mix it, them together. Uh, it's also related with the exposure time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, here we have one of the most incredible pieces of photographs I've ever seen. It's so large that you had to print it on two pieces of paper. <laughs> and is this one, this is an example of where you painted onto glass right yes. or plexiglass mm -hmm. and then you exposed it and you can we'll see in in the series that we have the similar these images right here are repeated in the other photographs but mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about how and why you wanted to make this so big this is approximately um probably seven feet by about 11 feet mm -hmm. um, i was trying to describe uh imagination on another planet that Maybe in the future, human will uh, go 
to. Uh, so I imagine something and I paint uh, with uh, transparent aqua onto the glass mm -hmm. and I let the color natural mix together and until uh, I see uh, the image I like so I stop it and then I let it dry for um, like one day. So next day I start to use it in the dark room mm -hmm. to um, create the different mm -hmm. color of the and, and this one you had I think this is a different this is a unique kind of paper too. Which paper is this one? This is a metallic metallic paper. paper. Mm -hmm. And does that give a little bit of a crisper kind of um, color and edge to it? Or is there I mean why do you use the metallic paper on uh, some of them and not on others. I like that there's a, like a shining feeling okay. of the paper. So you get the a double reflection. Mm -hmm. And I think it is important for people to understand that you use a watercolor mm -hmm. as your paint medium because it's translucent and it will allow it works with the light as opposed to if it were if it were opaque and especially dark colors, um, you would get we'd get nothing but voids mm -hmm. in the in the work That's and right. everything. Here again we have that same image that you had started here and this piece is, is really wonderful this is on a different kind of paper too than mm -hmm. the first one isn't it this is a glossy paper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so you choose your paper by the availability or just you experiment with different papers uh, i try to uh, make experiments so see how it shows in different mm -hmm. paper cool very cool. I love the fact that you have these two red bands too on the side. Um, it just makes it, it's just so different. You're, you're using the same idea, but you're changing up the environment that you're presenting it in. And I think that really makes it very exciting. Now this is truly a photogram. Um, this is one of your dream inception works. And um, this piece, um, tell us about how you got the objects and then this wonderful, Wonderful calligraphic uh, mark on it. Um, I put some object directed on the photo paper in the dark, uh, but the object I spent a few months to choose. Firstly, I um, used uh, like balls, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I, I used a flat circle. I used a different kind of balls, yeah. and uh, I used pipes. So uh, finally, I found a. Uh, um, some ways to create something like this and I use uh, laser pens mm -hmm. to uh, make the colors different colors so uh, this was made um, uh, I used uh, uh, a laser pen light right yeah a, light. a light yeah. directly put on paper and draw the lines mm -hmm. so the whole creation uh, was like to use light to paint mm -hmm. and I think it's mm -hmm. interesting it sort of work I work with um, Xerox copies and it's sort of like a Xerox copy if you leave the copier up and there's nothing to be exposed and you hit print it prints a black <laughs> field in your case because the light was pure white it, mm -hmm. it makes it a dark image and I just I love this I love the rhythm to it I love the fact that you've made these almost look like they're three-dimensional objects here these are cylinders not just a flat circle mm -hmm. um, and some of the things that you took to create your different works were um, actually toys from your son, weren't they? Yes. <laughs> so anything was fair toys. game, wasn't it? <laughs> in your house. Anything could be used in a photograph. Yes. Again, here we changed the, the um, color palette so much. This is very dark, with lots of purple in it. Um, when we look at the, the greens and the blues at the first one, and then we have the red, and now we have these blues and, and um, purples. Um, what do you think when you change the palette like that? Do you get the same satisfaction uh, yeah, when you look at the um, image? Yes, I want to try different colors. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 each one, uh, except the colors, they are small object, object different. Mm -hmm. So I was trying, uh, always trying to hide something different inside. And uh, it came uh, not naturally, it looked like artificial. So you, when you look at the photo, uh, of another planet, uh -huh. you would see maybe there are human visiting, or maybe some other um, 
intelligent mm. life form culture. or something. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> life, yes. <laughs> so it does make it more curious and more of a mystery, I think. The next two pieces that we're looking at truly are look more like the universe and, and like a galaxy that we might see in the sky. Um, this one in particular I like because it's very painterly for a photograph. Okay. You've got these wonderful swirling marks that you've got and there's a lot of depth because you burned out this area here mm -hmm. so that it looks like they're coming forward and there's the light is actually receding in this case. Um, can you tell us about these two? Mm. Uh, I named this cell mm -hmm. number six. So sometimes I feel like one cell could be a galaxy mm -hmm. and one big galaxy could be a cell. So uh, these ones, uh, that because I modified many times. Uh -huh. So um, it, all the process remained. Uh, and when I modify and modified and until I got a, I think a nice image, I stop it. Then you stopped it. Mm -hmm. uh, then sometimes I use, um, um, uh, multi lights. So, create... and is this a, ca a case where you use multi lights? Yes. The, well, for the reds and the yellow, mm -hmm. and then the very dark part. Uh, is... No, oh. this is, those are the objects I put on the painting. Okay. And there's a, a color from multi lights. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great. And then this one, when we look at this, this really does look like a galaxy. We have this mm -hmm. wonderful swirling kind of vortex going on in it and everything. Um, and this, what kind of paper did you use for this, this one? This is non-glossy. Non-glossy, mm -hmm. so it does, and it is amazing when you go through the exhibit, the, the different qualities that each paper presents um, actually interacts with the image that you have. And I think this one is really, I mean, it looks like something that from Star Trek <laughs> we would see at them using this as a, referring to another galaxy. Yeah. And how did you determine red would be the color that you did this one? I had another piece with a colorful. Oh, uh -huh. So the, the colorful one, the color uh, uh, was from the uh, painting itself. Yes. And I use a white light. So this one, I particularly uh, use a uh, blue light. Um, so, so it turned more uh, red. Mm -hmm. And I also use the white light, both. Mm -hmm. And I try to uh, show like a, a nebula creating mm -hmm. some new stars. Yes, <laughs> it does. And I think it's so interesting because you can hardly see it, but when you're up close, there's actually a magenta dot in there and it just I think it's wonderful because a lot of that is beyond your control it just I mean you do know what you're doing but at the same time sometimes the the light and the chemicals could react differently and give you something that you don't always predict I it, guess it took me more than one year to find the uh, the right ball to use <laughs> from my sense. <laughs> so it isn't random by any, to the, any stretch <laughs> of the imagination. Um, here, Jeff and I, uh, actually, this is the Cell series, and we chose these because they're all similar, almost identical as far as what the, the cell image itself is. And then you changed it by changing out the colors. And I think it really shows that even in photography, just like in printmaking, you can make these monotypes with something that is very meaningful to you, which I assume that that, that mm -hmm. round image is, you know, is the cell to you. Mm -hmm. And that you can influence it just by doing different colors and everything. Now, are these all on the same paper? Yeah, they're all on metallic paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, when I uh, paint, mm -hmm. uh, I tried to imagine what it will be. Um, so I, I, when I want a green color, I put a red color. When I want a red color, I put a green, something like that. And so for example, this one, I, when I use white light, it uh -huh. shows exactly the color, color. Uh, of your painting, yeah, right? Yeah, of the painting. And then, uh, but this one, this one, uh, uh, not. It's from the light color. Uh -huh. mm. So that they're strictly yes. just by influencing the color of mm -hmm. light. And again, we have to reiterate that the spectrum, the light spectrum is so different than our color wheel spectrum, where we mix and paint so that you know what color of light to choose to have 
a red, mm -hmm. as you just indicated. Um, we have this other big one here that I think is just really, really remarkable. And it's also, it's called base, isn't it? I yeah, base. Yeah, base. Um, can you explain the, the um, uh -huh. title and the process to do this one? Uh, this also the imagine, uh, imagination I had uh, for another planet. So when, when you look up, uh, you see the stars, planets, mm -hmm. but obviously it was not from Earth. Yeah, so see this? So this is not, this is not our sun. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, it's just an imagination yeah. of a uh, landscape. So, uh, and I use some small objects mm -hmm. look like... Like, it. what is this this object down here? Do you um, remember what that was? Yeah. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fan. A what? A fan? A small fan. Oh, a small fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I use something um, to create, uh, it's like a um, human has set up a base on uh, another planet, and they are... Uh, might be some life around. Very good. And I think one of the good, great takeaways from your body of work is the fact that these are dreams. So you're sketching in your mind, actually, that you're not doing any real preliminary ideas and, and discarding ones that you don't like. Everything comes to you naturally. Yes. And then it's your own recollection on how you're going to express it in your photograph. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just amazing. The size is also amazing. We've never had an exhibition of photographs this size before. And the fact that they're all abstracted, I think makes for a very curious and interesting gallery experience. And we hope that everyone will come to see it. It's up through this, through the month of August, and we are looking forward to, September, I mean, um, and we're looking forward to um, a lot of people coming. We've had great, great response from everyone that's come through because it is, it's so unfamiliar to us and it is such a wonderful, wonderful gallery experience. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank yep, you, thank you. And um, check out more information on our website at peoriaartguild.org. Bye.